dear students welcome to the session in this compiler design subject we are going to learn about the lr parsers okay so what are the contents we are going to learn in this session we are going to learn about what is the lr parser is and the objective of the session is you are going to understand what is the basics of the lr parsers and what are the various types of lr parsers and after completion of this session you may have a clear idea about what is a lr parser and what are the various types of lr parsers so why this we are going to learn about lr parsers because already we learnt about the top down parsers like LL1 and recursive descent parser, operator precedence parser. Then why we are going for the LR parsers? Because the LR parser is the most general and this of non backtracking and shift reduce parsing. So which is more attractive and it is not suffering from the problem of left recursion or left factory. And we can say that this LR methods or LR parser is a super set of all this remaining parsers. So, we can write that LL1 grammar is the uh, subset of LR1 grammars. That means, these LR parsers can parse most of the grammars. Okay? Then, a LR parser can detect a syntactic error. So, this is one more important feature in this parsing. A bottom up parser based on the concept known as LRK parsers. Here the L stands for left to right scanning of the given input string and this R stands for the uh, constructing of the rightmost derivation. Of course, it is in the reverse manner and finally, this K stands for the number of look aheads. Okay? So, number of input symbol of a look ahead that are used in making parsing decisions. So, the components of LR parsers. A LR parser consists of a stack. So, this is the data structure we are going to use for the parsing process and this is the input buffer where we can load our input string. Finally, the LR parsing program or LR parsing algorithm we are going to use to perform this parsing process and which uses the parse table known as LR parse table which consists of various parts like or we can say there are two tables action table and go to table or action part and go to part of the parse table. So, by make use of the stack input buffer and parse table the LR parsing program is going to perform the parsing operation and going to generate the output the output is a parse tree. The output is a parse tree. Come to the types of LR parsers. There are four types of LR parsers. The first one is LR0 and the second one is SLR1 and also we can call it as simple LR. And the third one is CLR1 known as canonical LR and the fourth one is LALR known as look ahead LR. But here these LR0 and SLR1 parsers or to construct the LR0 and SLR1 parsers we need LR0 canonical items. We need the LR0 canonical items and to construct the CLR and LALR1 we need LR1 canonical items. These is the way of the powerfulness <coughs> and LR0 is the least powerful when compared to SLR1 and SLR1 is least powerful when compared to CLR then LALR. The various terminology of the LR parsers. The first one is item, second one is the closure operation what we are going to perform to construct the LR0 or LR1 items. Then the go to operations it is also used to construct the LR0 items or LR1 items. Then finally, parts table which consists of the various parts like go to end action, go to end action part, then finally the parsing process. Now come to clearly explain about this particular item. So, what is a item? If there is a production, 
if I am going to add a dot on the right hand side of the production, then it is known as a item. Let us say in the given example here a tends to if I am adding a dot on right hand side of the production, it is known as a item. And while the parsing is going on, the dot symbol is have to move in this right left to right direction. And if I am writing like a tends to x dot y z, which means the parser reads the x that means the reading of x is completed and it is going to read y z it is going to read y z or y z is the portion of the string is to be written by the particular parser. Then if I am writing a tends to x y z which means at this time the parser completed the parsing of x y but recently y and it is going to be read the string or read the symbol z. And finally, if I am writing as a tends to x y z dot which means here the dot is on the extreme right of the particular production which indicates the parsing is or the reading of the string is completed. And if the dot is on the extreme right such is known as final item. We are going to perform or the LR parser is going to perform the reduction operation depend upon this final item only. In the construction of LR0 or LR1 items, there are two important functions we are going to use. The first one is closure operation and the second one is go to operation. Here we are going to discuss about the closure operation. Let us say this is my given grammar x tends, x tends to xz, x tends to ab or a and z tends to b. First I have to apply or I, first I have to construct the closure operation. So, I am going to take s yes tends to I have to attach the dot on right hand side of the production and I have to write like this. So, s yes tends to initially x z, but now I wrote as s yes tends to dot x z. That means, until now nothing is written by the parser okay, because the dot on the extreme left of the right hand side production. So, if there is a dot and after the dot if it is a terminal symbol, so no need to perform the closure operation. But if it is a non-terminal, so non-terminals means a grammar can be specified as g equal to v t p s, where v is means variables or the non-terminals. Here after dot if there is a non-terminal definitely I have to write all the x productions that means all the such non-terminal productions. So, I have to write x tends to what are the uh, productions for x? x tends to a b and x tends to a and I have to include the dot here also. So, now check after this dot what is the symbol it is if it is a terminal or non-terminal. If it is a terminal I cannot write any production. Why? Because all the all these grammars are context free grammars. If it is a context free grammars, all the productions must in the form of a tends to alpha, a tends to alpha, where on left hand side of the production it must be a single non terminal and on right hand side it may be v union t star, where v the variables t the terminals. So, after dot if there is a terminal symbol no need to write this any production or no need to perform the closure operation. But after the dot if there is a non-terminal definitely I have to write all the non-terminal productions. So, you may clearly observe here I did not include the z tends to be in this item. Why? Because uh, s tends to dot x z after this dot capital X is there, x is there. So, I include the x productions. After dot z is not there, so no need to write the z productions. 
come to the go to operation. So, in the previous slide, we explained about how to perform the closure operation. In this slide, we are going to discuss about what is the go to operation. Let us take, let us take the grammar S tends to dot X Z and X tends to dot A B and X tends to dot A and Z tends to dot B. Let us say this is my item. So, I am going to perform the go to operation now. So, S tends to come to the first production after this dot X is there. So, the parser is going to read the this particular symbol X. So, what I have to write on capital X, I have to write S tends to. So, the parser is completed the reading of X. So, I have to write X dot Z. I have to write x dot z. So, you can clearly observe here after this uh, dot there is the symbol which is z which is a non-terminal. So, I have to write the all the non-terminal productions are like that z. So, what are the z production? z tends to dot b. So, this is my new item. Let us say the item name is i1. Now, come to here second one x tends to after this dot a is there. So, I have to write a that means, I have to write the symbol this one which is after this dot. So, what I have to write x tends to a dot b. You can see after this dot b is there. Okay. So, what is this b? I cannot perform the closure operation because after that which is a terminal and come to the next one. Come to the next one x on a x tends to a dot x tends to a dot. Simply you can view x tends to a dot that means the dot is on the extreme right of the right hand side production. So, we can say that which is a final item, but you can see on small a there are two go to operations. So, no need to write in the separate way you can combine these two. And finally, come to this on B, Z tends to B dot. So, this is another item. So, we are going to move the dot operator or dot symbol one symbol at a time from left to right until it reaches to the extreme right of the right hand side product. Next, come to the parse table, it is known as LR parse table. which consist of two parts known as go to part and action part, which is the action part and the go to part. And we have to write all the particular states in this first column, then we have to fill or what is the action portion and what is the go to portion. So, this is the LR parsing algorithm. Here the input is loaded onto this input buffer and this is LR parsing algorithm and it uses a stack which where we are going to perform the shift and reduce operations by taking the input from the input buffer and using the stack symbol or the stack and by using this parse table we are going to perform the parsing. So, as we discussed this parse table consists of two parts known as action part and go to part. Here it is described as action table and go to table and in this action table we are going to write the terminals including the dollar. So, we have to place all the terminals so what is existed in the given grammar including dollar and come to the go to table we are writing only the non terminals or the variables of the given grammar. It is going to generate the output which is the parse tree or syntax tree, parse tree of the syntax tree, parse or syntax tree. 
and while the parsing is going on there may be a chance of occurrence of two types of conflicts known as SR conflict and RR conflict. If it is a SR conflict that means in a item if there are shift and reduce operations let us say if there is like a tends to dot a b and a tends to b dot that means here I have to perform the go to operation as on small a I have to write a tends to a dot b. Here you can clearly observe there is a shift operation and there is a reduction operation or that means it is a final item. If it is a final item is there then definitely we have to perform the reduction operation. That means here it is a shift operation and there is a reduction operation. So, which generates the yes or conflict? That means the parser is going to confuse whether I have to perform the shift operation or reduce operation. Now come to the next one. It is a RR conflict. What is the meaning of RR conflict? In a given item, if A tends to A dot and A tends to some B dot. Let us say these are the two final items in the given item or given state I n. So, because of this final item definitely the parser has going to perform the reduction operations. So, in this particular state there are two final items. So, it has to perform two reduction operations. So, let us say R1 for this particular A and R2 for this particular production. So, now the parser is going to be confused whether it ha I have to perform the R1 operation or R2 operation which leads to the RR conflict. So, we can say it is a reduce reduce conflict. Next. From this session you will learn about the what are the various advantages of the LR parsers and what are the terminology we use in the LR parsers like action, go to, parse table and finally what are the types of LR parsers. The types of LR parsers are four types of LR parsers are there LR0, simple LR or SLR1, CLR and LALR. Thank you.